I'm Daniel Hester. Welcome to the Metal School. So, not always do we have the proper fit up or the most desirable fit up. Sometimes we have our helper cut the metal for us and it doesn't come out exactly the way we want it. I've got some 1 16th tubing here that isn't mitered exactly right. <clears throat> you can see when I hold it into the square that I've got a big gap on the inside corner. This is going to want to pull and shrink a lot when I weld it up. So I'm going to show you a few techniques to try and hold it as square as possible. Because it's thinner metal, I'm going to turn my welder down just a little bit to about 90 amps, which is going to be more than enough for welding this metal. Um, I'm going to leave the same tungsten in. It'll work fine. It's a 332 tungsten. Um, gonna, I'm going to start by tacking the outside corners, holding it in the square. You'll notice that I didn't put a bevel on this because the gap is so large. I'm going to have to add a lot of filler metal just to close that up. Okay, now using my framing square to keep it as square as possible. I'm going to grab a couple of vice grips to help hold it in position while I'm tacking it. Okay, holding my metal nice and square. I'm going to use some fairly large filler rod here because I've got this huge gap to fill. This is really a little bit extreme, but we're going to go for it anyways. I've got some 1 8 filler rod. I'm going to start on one side add the filler metal, and then keeping the torch on the filler metal, I move over to the other side to make the tack. Now I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom. Starting on one side, I melt the metal, add some filler metal, then weave it over to the other side. Now I'm willing to bet that even though we've tacked this, having it clamped down to the table, the strength of the metal shrinking is actually going to have already pulled this out of square. Let's take a look. So it's already pulled out of square about a sixteenth of an inch. So what I'm going to do before I go any further is clamp this down to the table because it's only tacked. I'm going to get a big hammer. Give it a little tap because these tacks are easy to stretch.
Yeah, a little bit more. That's better. So, in an effort to try and keep this from pulling incredibly far out of shape, I'm going to weld, like we did before, the back corner first. I'm going to use a 1 16th filler rod because I don't really need to add a lot of metal. This corner is fitting quite well. Nice little weld locking in the corner. Okay, now I'm going to weld this again from the inside to the outside. I'm going to use 3 seconds filler rod because I've got a large gap to fill up. I'm going to weave from one side to the other as I'm adding the filler metal in. I may actually keep my filler metal in the puddle the whole time that I'm welding, weaving it back and forth in order to fill that large gap. So let's take a look at that. I keep pushing the filler metal in to the puddle as I go. As my gap narrows, I can go back to using the other technique, making a puddle and dropping the weld metal in. You'd hardly know that was a really bad fit up. So now we're going to go ahead and do the other side the same way. <clears throat> we'll start on the inside corner where the gap is widest. We'll add some filler metal to one side and then start weaving it back, back and forth, keeping our rod in the puddle the whole time, feeding the rod in until it gets narrow enough that we can leave the puddle and then start adding filler metal to it.
Nice flat weld. Don't have to worry about the penetration on that one. Okay, so now for an even more challenging weld, we have this large gap on the inside for the fillet. I'm going to use an even larger filler rod, 1 8 filler rod, to fill that gap. I'm going to use the same technique of leaving the rod in there and then weaving my arc back and forth between the two pieces of metal. Not a bad weld. Don't have to worry about penetration on that one. So let's see how we did for square. Not too bad. Pretty amazing, really.